Hey everybody, it is late at night and I am Norman. Apparently, I love Hamiltons because I currently own three of them. And since I owned the Khaki Field, I've actually owned four Hamiltons throughout the course of my watch collecting. Tonight we're going to look at these three Hamiltons side by side. One of them has a rich vintage history to it, and the other two are vintage. So let us begin. The first Hamilton we're looking at is the Hamilton Bolton. And I purchased this watch as a replacement for my Longines Dolce Vita. And I don't regret it at all. The Dolce Vita is brilliant, but now that I don't have a watch that's essentially an homage to the Cartier Tank Americaine, I feel less weird going for a Cartier Tank Americaine. When I owned the Dolce Vita, it seemed weird to be trying to scrape and save a ton of money for a watch that looks very similar to one that I already had. So now that is not a problem and I'm actually pondering going for an American. And secondly, this is quartz so it's easy to pick up and go and it doesn't have a date which is something that bothers me. I'm weird. And I love the way this thing hugs the wrist. I find it intriguing how there aren't any straight lines on it until you go back and see that the case plate here does have a straight line, but really that's the only one. Everything else curves everywhere. And this has some pretty decent vintage chops. The Bolton was originally produced in 1940 or 1941, right around there. It was such a hit that it was re-released in 1946 and it was offered for sale from that time all the way up until 1954. And the Bolton II came out in 1960. And if you look at pictures of vintage Boltons, they look quite a bit like this. The case is the same, uh, these indices are different, the hands are very similar and it has the sub-seconds like the old ones did. Now, what's interesting is I did see a picture of one that was actually a tank-style watch. It didn't have the tonneau-shaped case at all, but it was described as being a Bolton. I don't know if someone had that mislabeled or if the Bolton had a different case for a short period of time. But this is a reasonably affordable watch. It has the sapphire crystal, and it's... Quartz, if you don't mind quartz, it's an easy piece to pick up. It's just ready to go. So this isn't a watch that I wear all the time, and it's kind of nice to just be able to open up the case and put it on. And as you can see, it looks really good on the wrist. I have a 7-inch wrist, and that's what it looks like. Absolutely gorgeous watch. And after seeing pictures of vintage Boltons, no wonder why I love this watch. By the way, I am actually not orange. It looks like the color balance is a little off kilter tonight. The next Hamilton that I bought is also a quartz piece. However, this one is pretty old. It has the hinged lugs. I've done a review of all of these, so you can go back and see those full reviews. But now that I have a Veblenist strap that's nice and supple, I can actually wear this watch. The one downside of these hinged lugs here is you have to have a pretty flexible, thin strap for them. Otherwise, they kind of do this and start digging into your arm. So with the strap like this one, they kind of behave a little bit better. And if you put the strap under them, they look really weird. So you have to put them on like this. And if you get a strap like this one here, not a problem at all. This is the first watch I've ever owned with one of these crystals here, where it just looks like a really thick square of glass that sticks up above the case. This is such an amazing looking watch. It looks so good on the wrist too. 
So let me show you that. And there it is. Like I said, this watch just looks absolutely amazing on the wrist. And with this strap, it's really comfortable. If you've not purchased a Veblenis strap before, I highly recommend them. I own three of them. I mean, all the ones that I own are unlined and stitched like this one. I haven't explored their other straps, but these ones that I own are just absolutely amazing. Oh, look at that thing. That is so cool. And my latest Hamilton to be added to my collection is this absolutely brilliant piece. It has a similar crystal to the one we were just looking at. The case is in excellent shape. I believe this was refurbished a bit because it looks pretty new. However, I do need to go in and kind of blow some dust out of there. If you look in certain lights, you'll see dust on the inside of the crystal there. And after I did a review of this watch, I opened up the case back and regulated it because it was performing really well. Um, it just, well, I think it was just not regulated properly. It was behaving as though it had been serviced, like the amplitude was really good and the accuracy readout was just a straight line, but it was a straight line going down. So I regulated it and it has been performing amazing. And like when you wind it, it actually feels like a newer watch. It's just, oh, this watch is so cool. Now I paid a decent amount for this thing. So it wasn't like a uh, $100 vintage piece. It was a few hundred. The interesting thing is this is one of those watches where the case back holds the movement in place. So when you pop this case back off, the whole movement just comes out. You don't have to remove the stem or anything. I love how it almost touches on some of their space age looking pieces that they did in the 50s and 60s. Just in these corners here. I would love to get a vintage Vega. So that would be four Hamiltons. But those are no joke. They rarely show up, and when they do, they're at least a couple grand. Which is kind of a steep price for a watch that's kind of gimmicky and fun, but a little bit crazy. So it's not like it would get worn a ton, but who knows. And on the wrist, it is just stunning. And I really like it on this alligator strap. That aesthetic fits it perfectly. Yeah, this watch was totally worth the money. It's absolutely amazing. So there they are, my three Hamiltons. And I have quite a few searches out there for vintage Hamiltons, so I'm guessing I'll be adding more in the future. Man, how many Hamiltons am I going to end up with? Uh. So there you have it, the three Hamiltons that I own and the two vintage pieces that are newer to me have been on my wrist almost every day. They're both fighting for wrist time. I kind of go back and forth. They're absolutely brilliant. Thanks for watching.